so there is no recommendation written in the prospectus we will give 60 questions 80 questions or 100 questions or 5 questions image based right but uh, lot of students have got a block on the mind that uh, if clinical vineyard based questions and image based questions come how are we going to answer in the exam we want practice for that there's a reason we kept it kept the number of image based questions slightly on a higher end but if you look at the state pg entrance 50 60 questions are asked right so let us hope the similar proportion in neat pg this year paper once neat pg is conducted then we will know what is the examiner's uh, mood huh? and uh, maybe that will help next year batches to decide less or more number but no wrong in having practice right obstructive sleep apnea lead to pulmonary hypertension which will put pressure on the right ventricle and right ventricular failure not left endemic populations we find follicular carcinoma i'll try to run faster right in the gout what do you find First metatarsophalangeal joint of the big toe. Wide fixed split is a feature of ASD. Then iron deficiency from anemia of chronic disease. Ferritin is sensitive. Low ferritin is iron deficiency. High ferritin is anemia of chronic disease. Then uh, uh, X-ray is discovered by wrong chin. Then uh, obstructive lung disease versus restrictive. How do you differentiate? There is a decreased FEV1. And also even FEV1 by FPC. If it is normal, that is more likely to be FEV1 by FPC. Normal is a feature of restrictive. restrictive. Then X-linked restrictive is a Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And the normal anion gap is around 10 to 12 millimoles. In pleural effusion, you find dullness, not hyperresonance. Unlike in pneumothorax, where hyperresonance is found. Ankylizing spondylitis is HLA B27. Weber... Nothnagel, Benedict, all these syndromes you should be sure. Third cranial nerve. What is Weber? Weber is oculomotor with contralateral hemiparesis. Whenever midbrain is affected, then third cranial nerve is located in midbrain. But pyramidal tract is unmarried. Pyramidal tract, miss pyramidal tract. Hai. Mrs. Kab banega? Lower medulla ane ke baad contralateral side jayega. Sasural jayega. Tab tak maike mein hai. If it has paralysis in the mic, it will be affected in the sasural. Ultimately, it has to descend and go to contralateral side, no? contralateral hemiparesis. Then, north nagel is superior cerebellar peduncle. Superior cerebellar peduncle connects with the midbrain and cerebellum. So, midbrain is involved, third cranial nerve, cerebellar peduncle is involved, that is the reason there is a ataxia. Then, Benedict syndrome is red nucleus. Red nucleus is also at the level of the midbrain. So, there is a ipsilateral oculomotor and contralateral tremor, rubral tremor, it is called as. So, Weber, Claude, Parinod, Miller, Gubler, Nathnagel, there is a beautiful video of about 30 minutes duration in anatomy to medicine.com. Theory videos, if you go through, their brainstem syndromes and stroke is a topic. Nicely be discussed. Once more, we discussed in the DNB General Medicine Question Bank discussion also. So, please review all that. Von Willebrand disease, unlike hemophilia, where there are hemarthrosis. Von Willebrand may there are no hemarthrosis. The skin is warm in case of neurogenic shock. And uh, in hepatitis B, what is most commonly used to test basically uh, for the screening you can use PCR. Uh, then uh, total body electron beam therapy is a feature which you use in mycosis fungoids. Sigmund fraud superego. When will it develop? From 5 years. Id superego ego. Right? Superego denial. Id this impulse. Mujhe chahiye. Superego bolega? Kya bolega? Mujhe kuch bhi nahi chahe. Denial. Ego is the one which has exposure to reality. It will bring a balance between denial and impulse. That's the point. Then, uh, which immunoglobulin? What are the predominant immunoglobulins in multiple myeloma? 
typically IgG, IgA, IgD, they are the predominant. Then in multiple sclerosis, what do you get is basically a flaccidity due to spinal cord uh, blocks whenever they are there. Androcon cells are the ones which get affected. Spacity will come, sorry. Corticospinal tract get involved due to blocks. Spacity, not rigidity. Rigidity is a feature of extrapyramidal lesions which involve basal ganglia. Like Parkinsonism is extrapyramidal. What are the four tracts which are called extrapyramidal? I am going too fast. Yeah, I have to go fast because this is not our regular medicine class. Vestibulospinal, rubulospinal, tectospinal, reticulospinal. They are all called extrapyramidal. When basal ganglia involved, you get rigidity. Rigidity means resistance throughout motion. Let pipe quality. Spacity means corticospinal tract involvement, which is also the name for pyramidal tract. Okay. Now, you don't use ketoconazole in candidiasis. It is not effective. Rot spots are a feature of infective endocarditis. Cusimal sign is in cardiac tamponade, but not in case of, uh, sorry, it is not uh, seen in case of HOCM. Then 52 year old with depression has brain CT being performed. And typically the tentorium cerebelli um, is the site of origin for which tumor. Tentorium cerebelli is a type of meningeal covering that separates diaphragm, that separates supratentorial and infratentorial. So obviously arising from the meningeal cover means it should be meningioma. 65 year old with atrial fibrillation, acute onset of right sided weakness, inability to speak, reflexes are decreased. So what is it? What is the investigation? It is an acute cerebrovascular event. The most important decision you need to take in an event like that is whether to give or not thrombolytic agent. To give thrombolytic agent, you should be sure it is not a hemorrhagic stroke. To be sure it is not hemorrhagic stroke, we need to take a non-contrast CT. So that's the way you approach it. Then 64 year old with uh, hypertension has dysphagia, vomiting, hoarseness, left facial pain, right sided sensory loss. They are all classical. Oh? Wellenberg syndrome, which is due to posture inferior cerebellar artery occlusion, lateral medullary syndrome is one which he is having. 59 year old with brainstem stroke from a vertebral artery dissection develops dysphagia. So typically dysphagia is because of 9th and 10th glossopharyngeal nerve. So what is the common motor nucleus for 9th and 10th? It is a nucleus ambiguous. Then what is the sensory nucleus for 9th, 7th and 10th? Nucleus tractus solitarius. Have you seen it? Hmm? It's, it's, it's the best way to insult the classmates in the reading room is a syndrome bolo. Huh? Hermansky Pudlak syndrome. Suna kya? Are you not hearing it? Okay. Rokitansky Mayer Kastner Hosner. Have you heard it? Okay, it will be heard. What happens? Is it over or not? Or is it not over or is it not over? Oh, in the sky, see. What is it not over? Tell me, what is it? He is out, clean bold. So like that 90% uh, of fellows who come to reading room, you should kill them first. You should, reading is not the purpose, we should go to the reading room, right? We used to be such narcissistic personalities in our student days. Finally, those guys used to get in top 100, we used to get 3000, 4000 rank. <laughs> By the time we got 3000, 4000 rank, at least we would have killed the piece of 4000 people. Our rank is equal to number of mortality in the reading room, right? So, but finally, it's always a joy going to reading room, uncertainty of life. You don't know what you're going to become, right? And uh, you'll be forgetting what you are reading and there is no benchmark. Some guys knows those things which are totally dumb, right? And you will find dumber guys who are in an amoebic stage of preparation, at least you are at platic elementis, pneumatic elementis level of evolution. That is called the fun of preparation for PG entrance. Eh? So, but uh, if you focus on all topics, 5-600 topics, you will definitely get the seat. 23 year old, 
A doctor preparing for NEET PG describes recurrent memory problems. His fiancée reports that she seems to be inattentive for minutes at times, several times a week. He never injures herself during these episodes. EEG is not generalizing. So what is she basically having? She has a complex partial seizure. Complex because of loss of consciousness. Partial because it is not generalized. Right? So, there is no secondary generalization. So, for such person, carbamazepine is considered to be the treatment of choice. 63 year old, 4 year history of progressive spastic paraparesis, disturbed vision, eye movement, motor control and neuroimaging has been shown. Is this uh, illustration given? Huh? Old images are given, right? And in that, given in the uh, news for medical link, good. So, what is the most appropriate next diagnostic step in her? So, typically, he has a she has a gradually progressive myelopathy. Possibility of multiple sclerosis is there. So, middle-aged men with progressive form of disease is a characteristic feature. If you do MRI of the spinal cord, you can discover the plaques, right? And uh, uh, typically, what factors worsen the multiple sclerosis symptoms? Typically, a hot weather. And what is Lermit sign? Whenever they bend forward, there is an electrical sensation like a feeling. A 5 year old boy has mental retardation, homonymous heminopia, infantile spasms and a railroad track pattern of calcification is seen. So, it is a classical of Stooge Weber syndrome. Kenya versicola, malestasia furfur. So, 2.5% selenium sulfide, ketoconazole, itraconazole, they are the considered to be the treatment. 55 year old, skin lesions have been shown to you. They are all flaccid or a tense bullet? Flaccid bullet. Is this lesion uh, given to you in the paper? Good. And he gives history of similar episodes in the past. So, fundamentally it is the desmoglein 3 antibodies which are the feature in case of femphigus vulgaris is what need to be remembered. Elderly people is bullous femphigoid. Any age more typically young is or middle aged is femphigus vulgaris. Now, the uh, melanocytes are not involved in any immune response. There are some lesions which are called primary, which are called secondary. So, you must know lichenification, erosion, ulcers, excoriation, they are all secondary. Whereas, macules, papules, patches, plaques, nodules, tumors, they are all basically primary. Regarding the hair, ketogen is a transition phase only for 3 weeks. Telogen is the resting phase lasting for about 3 months. So, that is what you need to remember. Snow storm appearance is a feature of hydratiform mole. Bamboo spine is an ankylizing spondylitis. And in the chest radiograph, what are you seeing? Axial calcification, which is a feature of silicosis. And uh, this is a multiple myeloma. So, in this, the total serum protein will be very high. Albumin remains same. And the reason is increase of globulin in the middle. Then uh, there is a neural tube defect, right? Uh, what is the common predisposing cause? Maternal folate deficiency is a banana sign is being shown, and typically uh, it suggests of neural tube defect. Can you see a banana here? You should imagine a banana with the two leaves opened up. Banana sign, lemon sign, where there is an indentation of the calvarial bone. They are all features of neural tube defects and ultrasound. Come on. You know that or you don't know? 
Come on, don't say you don't know. Many times we discussed DNB, DNB, DNB question bank videos, you know. Hmm? 1500 hours, uh, 1500, uh, 150 hours, 5000 questions. And uh, obstetrics, radiology, many times we discussed this question. Right? Come up yourself from amoebic stage to uh, higher forms of life. Right? So please review the video. Right? expert Examiner cannot ask beyond AIMS, DNB and uh, All India Question Bank. Once you read that, at least read these three question banks. I mean, finish these three question banks. 5,000, 5,000, 5,000 questions. 150, 150, 150. 450 hours of video. Even if you ask beyond that also, you can guess. Minimum benchmark A lagana. Right? That is very important. Now, let's start with surgery. Shall we take a quick 5 minute uh, voice break? Yeah?
Now, welcome back to the session. From where does carcinoma posture derives? Posture lobe is most common location. Seagull is also called Mercedes Benz sign, where gas in the gallstone will give the typical shape of it on the x ray. Hypertrophic obstruct, uh, pyloric stenosis can be a complication associated with erythromycin intake. So, what are the most common cause testicular torsion occur? Tunica vaginalis, whenever it has got a high investment, then that can lead to development of greater chance of testis, torsion. Where do you give mantle radiation in Hodgkin's lymphoma? In Gullenberry syndrome, most common is a Campylobacter jejuni, with which it is associated or Epstein-Barr virus. Now, there is a variation of Gullenberry called Miller-Fisher variant. What is the meaning of it? They will also have ataxia additionally and uh, there will be a reflexy of limbs and ophthalmoplegia often with pupillary paralysis. The combination ocular variant of Gullenberry becomes Miller Fisher. Where does central venous pressure rise? Whenever there is any cardiogenic shock, then the JVP rises. Submandibular gland is the most vulnerable gland to lead to development of salivary gland stones. In ureterosigmoidostomy, there is hypochloremic, hyperkalemic, sorry, hyperchloremic, hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis actually. Why acidosis? Alkalosis should, oh sorry, I am thinking of congenital hypertrophic pyloricinosis. It is ureterosigmoidostomy, no? Yeah, normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, which is hyperchloremic, hypokalemic, metabolic acidosis will be there. Carcinoma anal canal chemoradiation is considered to be the treatment of choice. So, in internal hemorrhoids, we can use the sclerotherapy as a method to treat. Migratory thrombophlebitis is a feature which is seen in lung cancer, pancreas cancer, etc., etc. Congenital megacolon. Transrectal biopsy is the one, full thickness biopsy should be done. Staghorn calliculus has got the triple phosphate, ammonium, magnesium phosphate, right. Then uh, there is inflammatory bowel disease, refractory to medical treatment. So what is a true statement about this? Suppose if there is a high output fistula in case of the Crohn's. Then if you do total parental nutrition, then that will help the healing and early closure of the fistula. Then 54 year old colicky abdominal pain with non-bilious emesis. Upper GI radiograph is being shown. What do you see? Typically you are having that stacked appearance, which is typical of intussusception. So how do you treat it? You need to do expiratory laparotomy, manual reduction and resection of that involved segment. That is considered to be the management of choice. A 59 year old has underwent pelvic radiation therapy 7 years ago. And now she has a drainage which is purulent. And uh, what is the most likely diagnosis in her? There is an enterocutaneous fistula which has developed which is typically having an anastomotic leakage. Typical presentation uh, that is uh, seen in a post radiation scenario. Now the appendix. What is a true statement? If you look at the base of the appendix, there are tinea. So the point of confluence of the cecal tinea is the place where uh, the base of appendix can always be discovered. Now appendicitis if you look, what is the most common cause for the appendicitis in case of uh, the children? It is the luminal obstruction that lead to bacterial overgrowth, mucus secretion, increased pressure and leading to the development of uh, uh, the appendicitis. But what is the cause for that luminal obstruction? Typically it is the lymphoid hyperplasia in case of pediatric population. Fecolids in case of adult population is what you have to basically remember. Spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, 
how does it differ from secondary peritonitis secondary means you have everything in the anaerobes all organisms but spontaneous it is not like that it is not multiple organisms now primary hyperparathyroidism if you want to detect it what is uh, the test that you want to use pdh serum calcium and 125 uh, dihydroxy vitamin d levels they are the ones which you need to check in case of uh, um, uh, primary hyperparathyroidism if you look at the anatomy of the colon and the rectum uh, the ascending and descending colon are usually the ones which are fixed to the um, retro peritoneum is uh, what you need to understand transverse ascending descending may ascending descending fixed then uh, cecal diverticula versus sigmoid diverticula what is the main difference typically cecal diverticula are considered to be congenital hence all three layers cirrhosa mucosa sab kuch bhi all the three will be there whereas sigmoid diverticula do not uh, they lack a muscular component and that's the reason they are not considered to be a true diverticula is what you have to appreciate in what subset of population is the colonoscopy indicated in all the other scenarios not in case of inflammatory bowel disease inflammatory bowel disease whether the patient responding or not you will clinically judge based on the history and examination not by doing colonoscopy colonoscopy is only for initial diagnosis not for follow up of treatment so that is important to be remembered then uh, with regard to the colorectal polyps uh the hyperplastic polyps are the ones which are most common type and uh, you have the crypts which are characteristic of the gut it is the base of the crypts where mitosis occur depths that's what you need to appreciate then uh, uh in postpartum hemorrhage a lady who is taking antiretroviral therapy what is the best thing that you can use to take care of her prostaglandin g1 generally using oxytocin for induction or doing amniotomy for the vaginal delivery they are the ones which are avoided in a hiv positive mother that is the recommendation which is a carry home message so group b streptococci prophylactic screening you need to do in all cases between 35th to 37th week what is this fetal heart rate pattern one is uterine contraction other is the fetal heart rate so here the deceleration if you look is occurring for every two consecutive contractions so that is called late deceleration so late deceleration is a pattern that you are typically seeing is the image given jagruti has written a beautiful mail sir exam nazdeek aa rahe agar aap mistakes ke bina naye questions deke acha image based questions deke agar question paper nahi banaye to ha Um, we will shoot you, huh? like uh, uh, so. I am little careful every time. I feel okay. Old question paper questions laga ho bolne ke pehle. Uh, I will think, oh no, students are exam going means I will also sit like an exam going student. Nicely compose questions for you and see how well you will sustain uh, uh, the fight, right? So we compose all original papers. uh good questions careful questions are there any mistakes this paper last two papers by mistake thoda polluted ho gaya right hamara uh system thoda behal ho gaya so this week it is not there like that right and the online students i hope the images are clear for the online students without any problem in the clarity of images okay now 
if you are comparing laparoscopic salpingostomy versus laparotomy with salpingectomy for ectopic pregnancy, laparoscopic if you do kya hota? through keyhole, right? After doing procedure, gynecologist can go for honeymoon, patient also can get up and go home, pack. So, hospital stay become decreased on a keyhole surgery, that's the point, right? 30 year old twin gestation presents to labor delivery with irregular uterine contractions and back pain. She is febrile. Now uh, she is placed on external fetal monitor and uh, she has a vaginal delivery and uh, vaginal discharge uh, increased amount but denies any rupture of membranes and there is a light vaginal bleeding. So in this scenario what do you want to do to evaluate? You can take a rectovaginal swab for group B streptococci. You can do bedside ultrasound. You can do urine analysis. But you can't do repeated digital examinations. Uh, that's very, very important. Uh, because um, uh, number one, it introduces infection. And uh, number two, uh, there is a scope for placenta previa. Because it almost qualifies to be a antipartum hemorrhage. So... Unless you are very sure where is the placenta lying, if it is a low lying placenta and without knowing that if you have put the digits and try to do examination, then you will precipitate a worsening of placenta previa. A 22 year old presents to the labor and delivery at 30 weeks of gestation and the bleeding occurred shortly after the intercourse and she reports the presence of good fetal movements. So what is the best step you want to do? So, any patient who has vaginal bleeding in the third trimester should undergo the ultrasound as the first step to rule out the placenta previa is a rule that you should not forget. 24 year old has just been diagnosed with toxoplasmiosis. What kind of behavior increase the risk? Typically eating raw meat is uh, the underlying cause. 38 year old at 37 weeks of gestation complains of a rash on the abdomen which is extremely pruritic, which is the classical story of PUP. What is PUP? Pruritic articarial papules and clocks of pregnancy. It is the most common dermatological condition of pregnancy, more common in the nulliparous women. Quite often it is seen in the second and third trimesters of pregnancy, where there are erythematous clocks and papules, which are intensely pruritic is the typical nature. I leave the literature for you. How to differentiate that from prurigo gestationalis, right? And uh, uh, choli cholestasis of pregnancy that also lead to pruritus. So different causes of pruritus, when will they occur, which will occur in nulliparous women, which will recur, everything in the literature eh? you should review. 37 year old at 10 weeks of gestation has a history of Graves disease and on propyl thiuracil. Typically the newborn baby born to her has a high chance of going into hypothyroidism uh, is what you need to appreciate. 41 year old typically presents the patient's cervix is completely dilated efface and the fetal head is in the direct occipital anterior position and is visible at the introitus whenever she is pushing. Between introitus it is seen and extensive capet is being seen. Then which type of forceps you want to choose? All forceps kai se dikhaega jara ek bar obstetical datta ke last pages mein reta. Phir bhi if you are not very sure google images mein dekho. Phir bhi not sure go to the labor room and ask please show me Cleveland, please show me Piper, please show me pura kitchen ka saman reta na. Aapke PG in gynecology ke paas. Right? So, exam going PG ko pakdo. Because they also will be in a mood for uh, revising on your brain. Right? So, you should remember Simpsons is for low or outlet forceps. Cleveland is for mid forceps that will rotate the fetal head. And pipers are designed to deliver the after coming head during a vaginal breach. How each of these forceps look like image logically uh, Jojo is saying sir the questions are super 
images are great uh, go ahead in the same tempo they are also preparing in the same tempo that he did not say i am saying right 25 year old g1 p0 at 41 weeks gestation presents to the labor and delivery complaining of gross rupture of membranes and the fetus estimated weight is about 3.2 kg and fetal heart rate tracing is reactive so what is a clinical scenario typically the fetus in the double footling breech presentation and uh, that stands as an indication to perform a emergent cesarean section is what need to be remembered now the cranial tumors or hypothyroidism what will they lead to they lead to true sexual precocity what is the meaning of true sexual precocity normal gonadotropins and a normal ovulatory pattern but before the expected pubertal age normally during the pubertal age ovaries are ready to ovulate but pituitary does not release the uh, fsh and lh but if there is any pituitary adenoma inadvertently this fsh lh release happen even in the 8th year 7 year old girl then that lead to true sexual precocity that's the point now a 32 year old nulli gravid there's a bleeding increasing heavy, heavy menses and uh, what is the most appropriate to manage her in spite of using oral contraceptives anti prostaglandins it is not resolving so typically we need to perform a hysteroscopy to discover whether there are any endometrial polyps or small fibroids possibly responsible for her menorrhagia so the next step is hysteroscopy why do you use danazol typically in the management of endometriosis which is an ectopic endometrium right outside the uterine cavity so danazol has a androgenic effect that lead to development of atrophy right so that's the reason hysteroscopically what do you see ashman syndrome with lot of multiple additions so that lead to development of hypomenorrhea as a clinical presentation is what you need to basically remember now <clears throat> 42 year old with two normal pregnancies 15 and 18 years ago presents with a complaint of amenorrhea and she want to become pregnant again and uh, what is the best way that you can basically evaluate so 42 year old means she is ready to go into menopause right so check whether what phase of her reproductive how much ovarian reserve is there right so that you can know by checking for the lh and fsh a 19 year old medical student who has recently become sexually active is seen with severe primary dysmenorrhea she does not want to become pregnant and has failed to obtain resolution for that pain with heating pads and analgesics what is the best medication you want to give oral contraceptives is one of the conservative measures i mean one of the treatment choices available to handle the dysmenorrhea painful menstruation histosalpingogram is shown in a picture 32 year old female presenting with infertility so what is it basically issue salpingitis isthmica nodosa so uh, which is characteristic salt and pepper pattern of tubal filling and evidence of diverticulum on one side so if you want to know document the ovulation uh what is the best day fundamentally uh the most appropriate day of a normal 28 day menstrual cycle uh typically post ovulation progesterone is supposed to be high right so the day 21 so 7 days after ovulation is the best time to evaluate 
luteal phase inadequacy by checking for the progesterone agar if that is low then the underlying cause is luteal de deficiency 22 year old reports that her menses started at age 13 and have been irregular and uh, she has a sparse hair around the nipples chin and upper lip no galactoria thyromegaly temporal balding is noted i mean it is also not there so uh, what do you see here acne so typically you should think of possibility of constitutional hirsutism or polycystic ovarian syndrome or late onset cagelated hyperplasia but not certainly leydig uh, tumor because uh, certainly leydig tumors commonly age group is 20 to 40 it tends to be unilateral and it will reach a size of 7 to 10 and uh, they tend to have very high levels of testosterone and uh, there will be a very rapidly developing virilizing characteristics and clitromegaly is what you need to appreciate now estrogen what is its influence on the lipid profile estrogen is known to increase the hdl so that is the reason the women in the premenopausal stage have got a higher protection against the development of the coronary artery disease is what you have to ultimately remember so that is the story for the day